All right, this is a walkthrough on impersonating a login. Uh, so basically what impersonation is, when you are a worker logged into the worker portal, you can access the customers and basically log in to the front end customer sites, either the B2B portal and or retail sites as if you were the customer without having to know their username and password. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to just launch an impersonation real quick and then I'm going to come back and explain some of the details of it. Uh, so I, I just logged in to the B2B portal as a specific customer and I am now seeing the B2B portal as that customer. Um, so one notable here is you will see an impersonation bar that's floating down at the bottom of the screen when you're in impersonation mode. That's how you know you're in, imper in impersonation mode uh, versus just going directly to that customer site and logging in. You would have to have their username and password if you did this, of course, as the customer. Uh, so basically what's happening behind the scenes is we actually create a session and look at all the settings that are associated with that customer. So all their pricing settings and all of the, the, uh, the features that they can see that are applied to them through their account or customer groups uh, that are tied to that login. That's all being applied when an, a login impersonation occurs. And the goal there is to get it as closely representative to that customer logging in themselves. Uh, so as a worker, you can see what they see. So you will see different flavor variations uh, of the customer sites when you go in and do di uh, in, and impersonate different logins based on the settings uh, those users have. And I'm going to talk through some other concepts with that as well. Uh, you can see with this impersonation bar, uh, basically there's a couple action items that go on. One, if I click this uh, card icon, this will expand larger so I can see more details, phone number, email, and specifically who I'm impersonating. If you click the X, this will go down to the, to the standard view. So we're just on a larger or detailed view. You can also minimize this even further if you want to tuck it out of the way and click the down arrow. It will still leave this impersonation icon in the circle up for you uh, that you can click on any, at any time and get back to the standard bar. You'll also see this leave impersonation. Uh, and basically, uh, this, this will go back uh, to the worker portal or essentially log you out. Uh, now, you may uh, take note uh, that uh, depending on where the action link is, some of these in the worker portal will just open a new tab in your browser if you're on a desktop. Uh, that's so you can effectively leave the impersonation and, and, uh, and come back or, or uh, actually have toggle back and forth between your worker uh, login and your impersonated uh, customer login. Uh, it's notable that uh, you will not be able to successfully impersonate multiple logins on the same browser window, uh, customer logins at the same time. You could do them se sequentially, uh, but it could, the, the cookie will only uh, allow you to tie it to one uh, impersonated login at a time. Uh, but you'll notice here that I am, uh, the site is seeing me, in this case, as the house contact. I'll talk to, uh, about that in a second. Uh, but it, it's seeing me logged in as this customer uh, at this point. Uh, so I'm going to leave the in impersonation. And you can go navigate the site and see it just as if the customer saw it. Uh, so I left the site. Effectively, what it did was just log me out. You could just close that browser window and you'll be back on the tab or that browser tab. You'll be back on the tab. Uh, that you kicked off the impersonation with. Uh, so a couple notables about the impersonation. Uh, there's a few modes that are covered uh, in the article here, uh, but you can either impersonate uh, on the account level or you can impersonate on the individual contact or user level. Uh, the reason you may want to vary that is if you're placing an order on behalf of a very specific contact as a customer service rep or something, you might want to go into that contact and do an impersonation or if you're logging in to see what they see. Uh, versus doing it on the account level. What's happening on the account level, uh, so if I come in, I'm in the CRM workspace now, go under accounts, uh, which is where I'm at, and go to any given account, and the few workflows for impersonation to kick off impersonation. One is right on any given account, I can see an impersonate link. Uh, when I click the impersonate link, because we support multiple customer sites, uh, and the customer site doesn't, the customer doesn't necessarily have to be uh, tied to a specific customer site. Uh, there's ways you can make that happen. Uh, it will show you all the sites. In this case, on this SimCloud implementation in this demo site, we've got the main B2B portal, which is this first site. These are kind of cryptic site names here. Uh, and then we've got uh, uh, retail sites that are going on as well uh, that you could kick the impersonation in. So I can actually see this specific account login across the different sites that I have uh, if I wanted to. 
Uh, so when you kick that, basically what's happening is in the back end, we actually create a house contact for every single account that's automatic and is created on the back end uh, with each customer account. And basically when you do account level impersonation, there's nothing special about it. It's just impersonating that house contact that's auto managed and created. Uh, by our back end system. So that's true if you're coming here and hit impersonate, or if I go into the account detail page and there's various ways to get to this, the workflow I just showed you is one of them. I can go into new action here and impersonate and it will do exactly the same thing. It'll show me the list of sites. And then if I click impersonation, you'll see it's opening a new tab and I'm now impersonating. Uh, this is uh, uh, effectively producing the same net result I showed you right at the beginning uh, of the video. Uh, so if I leave this impersonation, uh, again, I can close this browser tab. Now back from here, the second, so that's basically two workflows uh, on account level impersonation uh, that I've just showed you. I can also show you, if I go under customers and hit contacts, uh, I, can, I can go hit the, um, uh, contact level impersonation. You can see the house contact is the one that I've been using. That's the one, if you pick the account level, it's going to auto pick the house contact. But I could go into a, a any other contacts that are on here. And on the contact level, I could go impersonate. And again, I'll see the same uh, drop list uh, of sites and I could pick the site. And now you can see this is a different account uh, that's under Neiman test uh, is, is who I'm logged in as uh, in this case. Um, and you can see uh, this, I'm impersonating Neiman test here. So, uh, so if I leave that impersonation, we'll come back here. A couple other notables. That impersonation can also be accessed from the manage contacts over here. So I'm, I'm on the contacts list specific to 1989 distribution, this customer account, uh, but I could go to the overall contacts uh, tab and search for contacts. That's an aggregate across all customers and initiate an impersonation from any given contact right from here, which will do the same thing. Uh, again, you can then go surf the whole site. You can place orders. You can do anything that that customer does, and it will think that it's that customer. We do do some things on the back end to track that it's you, that uh, the worker that's impersonating the login uh, in a few cases. Some other notables on impersonation. Uh, th this is not part of the scope of this video, but when you get into certain workflows, like creating a quote or order, uh, creating an invoice payment, or if you have the add-on bundle to place returns, uh, those workflows are actually using impersonation behind the scenes. They are in a specific workflow. So they, they just show what we call the focus template or a single purpose uh, template when you get in there. But you are actually impersonating uh, that, um, uh, that particular contact or on the account level, the house contact, like I, like I suggested. There are some cases like in the quote or order workflow where because we know you're impersonating the customer, we can expose if your worker login has things like the ability to edit pricing or edit shipping pricing and things like that. When you get into the quote or order workflow, uh, we can expose uh, those, those pricing edits to you that your customer would not see if they just normally logged in. So there is some special cases that uh, occur related that, that leverage impersonation uh, that are covered in different topics uh, in the help center.